Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. By now, I'm sure most of you have seen pictures and video from the proper party, right? The party that Ripple hosted, which ended about 48 hours ago, as of the time I'm recording this video anyway. Uh, it looked like an absolute blast. Um, I wasn't able to make it due to prior obligations that are only several weeks notice that the party was even going to happen, but I'm glad that a ton of people, like literally thousands of people, made it out uh, to New York City in the uh, at the Hammerstein Ballroom to, uh, to, to party with Lenny Kravitz, who was the musical talent for the evening. Just absolutely incredible. And that was kept under wraps. The, the musical talent was kept under wraps, and I, for good reason. I mean, I don't know if they technically or publicly articulated why, but it's you know, easy to assume why. You know, this party is for the XRP community, and if word got out that there was a free Lenny Kravitz, Kravitz concert, then you'd have a bunch of Lenny Kravitz fans who know nothing about XRP showing up. So it makes sense that you'd have the talent kept under wraps specifically for that reason. But my God, it looked like a blast. And I put a video out just a few hours after it happened because I was having a little bit of FOMO, admittedly. Like, I wish I could have been there. Um, so I shared a, a, you know, a bunch of pictures and video that had been published to that point just a few hours after the thing concluded. And I was curious because, you know, I, I speculated in, in that video just off the top of my head. I was like, I don't know what this damn thing costs to throw this party, but I wouldn't be surprised if it were literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. Just wouldn't surprise me in the least. And so this morning, I was a little curious. and I was like, huh, I wonder what it costs to book Lenny Kravitz. And after tallying up various expensive expenses in my head, I came to the conclusion that, although I don't know, admittedly, I don't know what this cost Ripple, it is possible that this could have been potentially somewhere around a million dollars for this one night party, which I think went on for about six hours. So that's that's a high cost per hour, right? <laughs> because think about all the food and drinks, everything that was given away. Um, now, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Ripple did that. It's a nice thing for the community. Uh, I'll defend them to the end on that. And I think most people are on the same page as me on that. Like, this is awesome. Uh, but not everybody feels that way. There are people that are actually offended and uh, that Ripple hosted this party and think it was a waste of money and it was wrong. And there are people that need the money more, uh, you know, on the planet. So I guess we just shouldn't party with Lenny Kravitz, so on and so forth. And I'm going to push back against those ideas because I think that is nonsense. So I'm going to challenge some of the things that people said in the community. Nothing against them personally, to be clear. Everybody's entitled to their perspective. Uh, but I'm going to articulate why I think that's wrong. And if anybody thinks that I'm wrong, that's fine. Just tactfully tell me why. Articulate your position because I think debate's fun. I enjoy it as long as people stay civil. But uh, before breaking this down, I do want to be clear. I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything <clears throat> because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Now, by the way, did you know that... Uh, Proper party actually means something in a legal sense. I found out recently, and I wish I could credit uh, the, the person that, that cited this on social media, because I always like to give credit where it's due, but I was scrolling through my feed, and I saw this, and then I was like, oh, that's interesting, and then I just kept scrolling, didn't think anything of it, but I thought I'd mention it in this video, and I don't know who to credit, so if you're listening, uh, sorry, <laughs> I, would, I would love to credit you, but um, suffice it to say, there's, there is a meaning, I still wanted to share that. And so here we have Legal Explanations website, and the question is, what is proper party? And so again, it's not just something that Brad Garlinghouse said, and then it, the, the party got named the proper party. Uh, it turned, and he never mentioned this, but there's a legal meaning behind it, which is as follows. A person or a firm who has an interest in the litigation and therefore can be brought in or join the trial <clears throat> with their own wishes is known as proper party of the lawsuit. Well, how about that? I never would have guessed that. I just thought that's something he said on a whim. And maybe it was, and then it just happened to have this meaning. But regardless, that's an actual thing. And so I shared this screen grab because, again, this morning <clears throat> I was just curious. Um, or actually, it wasn't this morning. It was yesterday I posted this. But I was wondering, what did, uh, what, what, what did it cost Ripple to hire Lenny Kravitz, world-famous musician with like a, just a string of hits over a long period of time, especially in the 90s? And so I came across this website, and there's no way for me to verify the degree to which this is accurate, but what's on your screen right now is a, it's a Las Vegas talent website, and they noted, as, as highlighted at the bottom of the screen there, that typically when you're booking Lenny Kravitz, it's going to cost you, depending on a number of parameters, anywhere between half a million dollars and $875,000 to book it. Now, that's... A lot. And again, I can't verify for sure, but assume even if it's at the lower end of that, 
that's just for Lenny Kravitz. That doesn't include everything else. And so then you look at, for instance, the um, the Hammerstein, or maybe it's Hammerstein Ballroom, uh, which is where this thing was hosted. And I found this online. This is from a, a, a the, the rental website here for, for the, the venue. And apparently the average price for that venue is $20,000 and holds about 3,500 guests. And by the way, it was packed. So there were literally thousands of XRP holders that traveled, in some cases, <clears throat> from other continents to actually be there, which I think is just cool as hell. So tack on another 20,000 there. And then you figure with all the food and drinks and everything else and all the swag that was given out, uh, it's it's not hard to see how maybe this could have been in, in the seven figures range. But even if it were less, that's still a lot. And so um, this isn't to say that it's, bad i think most people didn't take it that way it's more so that i was just in awe of the figure for what was basically about a six hour party now i think it's cool as hell and well deserved but it just was fascinating to me because that's just like that's on a whole nother level man uh and so um <laughs> crypto darren responded to my post where i wrote i wrote uh, if this is accurate then ripple spent at least five hundred thousand dollars to have lenny kravitz perform at the proper party last night XRP community member of Crypto Darren responded to me and wrote, they spent even more on my bar bill, which I thought was pretty damn funny. I was like, yeah, you're probably not the only one that feels that way. Uh, and then there was uh, another XRP community member at a bright light XRP <clears throat> on social media platform <clears throat> X, formerly known as Twitter, wrote to me and said, Moon, I do lighting for corporate production and concerts. I'd bet they paid the high end of it, honestly. Most A-list acts for corporate events just do $1 million. Whew. Okay, so he's got some industry experience, and he thinks, yeah, they actually probably did pay, pay closer to the million-dollar mark for Lenny Kravitz. That, whew. And I have no experience uh, in, in this particular industry. And, and so uh, no frame of reference, but that is just astounding. And good for them. Uh, but not everybody feels that way. Somebody named Doc Holliday responded to me and wrote, what a waste. Okay, fair enough. Again, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I don't think it's a waste at all, but is what it is. And I'll go into why. Just if you stick with me, I'm going to break this down. I think I have some pretty solid arguments. You guys can tell me what you think. But uh, here is another XRP community member named Ghost Daddy who wrote, paid for by broke holders. Classic. Okay, <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> Guess Ripple can't do what they want with their own money. They got a billion dollars in the bank, or at least that's the last figure that was publicly touted by Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse over a year ago. But uh, it's, it's, I guess it's not their money. They sold an asset that they had that other people speculated on on a global scale that gave it value, even though Ripple didn't know that would happen, and they took risks by starting a business and hiring people and all that stuff, and there was venture capital. But never mind that. It's the broke extra P holders that actually deserve that money, right? Is, is, is that the thought process there? Because I'm just not picking up. I'm just not buying what you're selling. I'm not picking up what you're putting down, man. <laughs> then there's XRP community member uh, BK who responded to me and said, so lame. What a lame thing to do. Should have given XRP to everyone and had a cheap meal. Okay, so there you go. So just a redistributionist model there. Uh, everybody's just owed what is not theirs. It should just, it should be everybody else's. I cannot relate to that. That type of thinking, uh, you know, and you, you encounter this, uh, you know, in, in the realm of politics with a certain amount of regularity. I, I just, I'm against that type of thinking. I'm going to break down further why, but let me share one more comment here. Uh, this is from XRP community member Dartman7373. They could have given that to someone who really needs it, in my opinion. Is that right? Is that how we're doing this? And so again, nothing against these individuals. They're entitled to their opinions. But I'm going to push back on the idea. Of course, not the individuals. I think the topic of discussion is fun. And not that I feel a need to defend Ripple. I'm going to defend the concept because I think that this idea is completely silly. Do you, do you understand? Okay, so let's... What, I don't care what the figure is. Say it's a million dollars. Say a say million dollars went to Lenny Kravitz. You understand that that doesn't just go to Lenny Kravitz, right? You understand that he's an entire sea of people working with him, not, not just the other musicians on stage, but everybody that's helping to coordinate and including with venues, this and that, full-time employees, all the people that are moving equipment. It's just, it's a boatload of people. That, that, that's how, when you're at that level with that type of operation, it's a ton of people. And so if you think that that money shouldn't have been spent on him because like, oh, yeah, the greedy rich, let's give more money to the greedy rich. No, let's not do that. Okay, well, if you have that type of attitude, it's not just the quote-unquote greedy rich at the top who are getting soaked if that money didn't go to them. So again, I already cited others that are getting paid. And then, so if this didn't happen, I mean, you know, that could have changed the venue. So then maybe the man, maybe you wouldn't, you would have had a smaller venue. You wouldn't have had a concert venue. You wouldn't have, so then the, the, uh, the Manhattan Center, which has the Hammerstein Ballroom, they wouldn't have got their money. And then all the staff that they employ, so on and so forth. 
But let's let's pick a bigger. Let's, let's think bigger than this. Even if, even if all of let's say one, this isn't the case, but say a hundred percent of that money went to Lenny Kravitz. What do you think he's doing with that money? Do you think he's like Scrooge McDuck? You guys know what Scrooge McDuck is, right? Do you think that do you think that he's like Scrooge McDuck and he's got like a, a vault of gold coins and he just goes he dives in head first and just swims around in it and he's just hoarding these gold coins? And if you don't know who Scrooge McDuck is, he's from a character from a, a beloved childhood cartoon of mine. <laughs> I grew up watching this stuff, DuckTales. But Scrooge McDuck, he had this huge ass vault and he'd swim around in, in these gold coins as if it were an actual liquid, which Family Guy properly parodied by having Peter Griffin in a cutscene jump into it and he just like broke his leg or something. Or hurt his ankle, I don't know what it was. Uh, but yeah, because if you have a bunch of gold coins, let's be real, that's basically a hard surface, effect, surface effectively. But So what do you think is happening? So Lenny Kravitz, what's he doing? Is he just, uh, just, just hoarding up all this money? It's in a vault under his bed and then nobody else gets it? It's like a zero-sum game and it's not benefiting anybody? No, that's not what happens. You understand that like wealthy people, they have almost none of their actual wealth in, in cash, right? Do you guys realize that? You know what they do with their funds? They invest. So th th can you imagine that amount of money getting invested into, even if it were just not something as cool and interesting as crypto, but say it were in equities? It's just, just, it's, it's say it all, he, say he puts it on, you got to put it somewhere, right? It goes to stocks, right? What do you think happens if he invests that? Because people have this idea that it's just like, it's this money, it's, oh, it's just tucking it under the mattress. No, 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 no. What happens is that money gets invested into who knows how many firms, probably a lot of Fortune 500 companies, maybe some smaller firms that are being traded, publicly traded companies. And then as a result of that, those firms, which employ, uh, you know, ultimately, if you collectively be millions of people, and then that ensures, uh, you know, that their firms are economically viable. And again, with millions of employees, and they're putting food on their families' tables. So like when people have large net worths, it's not that they're just hiding, being greedy and hiding the money. No, they put the money to work. Do you guys realize that? Hopefully some of you already knew this. Have you thought about the logical end? Because if you just have this feeling, you just feel something rather than logically think through it, like you have this feeling that it's bad and it's greedy and it should have gone to so on and so forth. Have you even thought about the implications of somebody like Lenny Kravitz having another million dollars? Is he Scrooge McDuck swimming around in gold coins? Or is it invested and therefore helping the broader economy? Obviously, it's, it's helping a sea of people, tons of people out there, right? And so Ripple's not doing some sort of bad thing by hiring Lenny Kravitz. Even though he's doing well for himself, him taking that wealth and investing it elsewhere helps the economy. And I'll tell you what, even if it didn't, even if it were just him, and even if he did want to take his in, in the entirety of his net worth and put it in a vault and try to swim around in it like he is Scrooge McDuck, that's none of our damn business. He should be able to do that if he wants and have a Peter Griffin style cutaway like Family Guy because he would break his leg <laughs> or his neck. But I'm just saying, but that's not what that's not what people do. Rich people don't keep a big percentage in cash because you lose money doing that. There's inflation. Have you heard of that? So investing the money, your money's never not at work. You're, the money's always at work helping other people around the planet. That's the point. It's not bad for these people to make it. This is spurs the economy. And everybody's got the opportunity. I understand that there are different privileges people have in terms of, you know, not everybody grows up having two parents. Some people have broken homes. There's all sorts of different types of privileges, and I get that. You're, we're not going to start at the same baseline as us as humans. But you know what the good news is? And this is empowering. At least in the United States, we have the same damn opportunity. We have the same opportunity to climb. If you've got hard work, you've got, if you've got talent and perseverance, you actually can make it. And so let's not bitch about somebody having grown up in a better home, for example. And so it's just the, the whole thing I, I push back against. I just, I don't like those arguments. I don't think they make a damn bit of sense. I think they emotionally may come from the right place. But if those emotions are as far as you take things analytically, and then if you're able to implement your thought process, you know what happens? People actually lose jobs, which is why I push back against this nonsense. Ripple did exactly the right thing. And it was good, and it was for the community. It's perfectly reasonable. They get to do whatever they want, and they should be able to. You know, it shouldn't be given to other people that you think. So Dartman 70s, again, nothing against you. I don't know if you're watching this, but no, the money shouldn't be given whoever, to whoever you subjectively think deserves it more. Because then you're just taking it from some, everybody else who would have 
benefited from it, and then there would have been ripple effects, pun intended, down the stream because we're in a global economy. You don't, you shouldn't choose that, and you shouldn't look at it that way. And I'm going to make the case str even more strongly right now. Did you guys know? And I, I had heard this. Um, I, I had known this for for some time that there was this, there's this act of Congress that was passed over 30 years ago. And it was predicted that it result in, and I'll, I'll show you the figures as we go through this, but like, I think it was tens of millions of dollars in additional tax collected. And, oh my God, it didn't, nope. <laughs> this thing was repealed like three years after it went on because it actually had a negative net effect. But the heart was in the right place because think about it. So it was basically a luxury tax. Think about all these rich people out there. They're spending over $100,000 on yachts and so on and so forth. Well, they can afford, they can afford to be taxed. So stick on another 10%. If you, can you imagine, look at the figures for the previous year, stick 10% tax on that. My God, we'll just be rolling in the dough. Now, of course, that was a bit short-sighted because you know what happened. Well, it, Econ 101, my friends, the more you tax something, the less you get of that activity. The higher the price of something is, the fewer people there will be to purchase it. Because everything, it, it, it's all subjective, just like you do. It's like we're all on our, our, our different levels here. So, like, I'm, I'm assuming there aren't a whole lot of billionaires listening to the channel, right? Uh, you know, most people are of regular means, I think, listening to the channel. There are some people listening that are rich, I know. But it, it's all relative. And, and and I'll tell you this, too, and I don't know if you guys realize this. On top of that, and I'm going to go through this. I want to share with you some of these facts because it's actually just astonishing what happened here. And I think it just absolutely destroys this idea of people subject, subjectively taking money from those who they think have too much to put it where they think it should be. Because you've got this, you're so virtuous. You got this moral high ground. No, get the hell out of here with that nonsense. That's, that's silly nonsense. And did you know, and, and before you insist that, that that should be done, I, did you know that all it takes in, here, this is this article, this is from 2012 admittedly, but you'll have about the same figure even if you fast forward. It's been 11 years since this article. I know it's about the same. I just found this one quickly. It doesn't matter. But here's an article from Daily Mail. America is the 1%. You need just $34,000 annual income to be in the global elite and half the world's richest people live in the U.S. So folks, as of 2012, but even if the number's slightly different, it's the point's still true. If you are making, as of 2012, $34,000, you're in the top 1% of income earners on the planet. And so you just want to take everybody's money, that wealth from everybody else that has more than you? Like, what do you consider rich? Everybody that has, has more money than you, is that it? You're in the 1%. If you're listening to this, I'm willing to bet that almost everyone listening to this channel is in the top 1% of income earners on the planet. Almost everyone. And if you're not, you're probably close to it. That's on the planet. And so before you start thinking, oh, you're in your high horse and you want to take money from everybody else, well, you're at the top. Why aren't you redistributing your own income to people below you? Where do you get off? With the, again, it's, it's just the virtuousness. And some people just are virtue signaling and stuff like that. And some people's hearts are in the right, the right place. And so you, you never know for sure when people are saying this stuff. But even if your heart's in the right place, think it through. Think about where you are. And so you want to see, you want to get, you see a real world example. I, I, I've known this example for the longest damn time. But uh, look at this headline from the Baltimore Sun. This is June 9th, 1991, over 32 years ago. Boat builders fight to stay afloat as luxury tax pulls down sales. Last year, some 220 workers built, built, built boats at Pearson Yachts Corp in Portsmouth, Rhode Island. This year, there are 50 workers left. Did you hear that, folks? They had 220 workers last year, and then this year, that was 1991, there are 50 left. Peace continues. On Maryland's eastern shore, Harrison Yacht Sales in Graysonville has trimmed its 95 employees to eight. Those job cuts are among an estimated 19,000 blue-collar marine jobs lost throughout the nation this year. The culprit, boat industry officials say, a 10% federal luxury tax that went into effect in January on new pleasure boats that cost more than $100,000. Created to hit the blue blazer crowd, the tax has instead slammed into the blue collar worker like a summer squall, according to boatyard owners and officials who tracked the 450,000 worker industry. Sales of boats that cost more than $100,000 fell by 56% one month after the tax went into effect, according to the National Marine Manufacturers Association. 
Some boatyard owners who report no sales this year have been forced to lay off workers or declare bankruptcy. Folks, how are you feeling about this high horse stuff now? Oh, this money. These how how dare these rich people spend money on these luxurious luxurious yachts? People are starving over on the other side of the planet. How dare they? Okay, except for where's the money going? And again, mind you, before they spent the money, like I just told you, it's already to work helping everybody else on the planet. If it's invested, it's doing something. If it's in equities or precious metals, you, you tell me. It's, over. it's doing something. So even, so even without the wealthy people spending it, it's already helping people, right? And so here we're talking about spending it, spurring the economy. And so people don't think past the fact that the, the person spending $100,000 plus on a, on a yacht, they get their yacht, ugh. And I think it's, it's just a lot of people are just jealous and stuff. It's, I hate the class warfare crap. I, I can't stand class warfare. It's bogus nonsense crap. It's childish. And, but you don't think about, okay, well, if they, if, they can't, if they don't buy the boat because you take the money or you take away the incentive or the supply and demand dynamic shift or you're making it, making it more costly through taxes, you get less of that economic activity. What about the people that work at those firms? They've got families too. You're harming them. How come people don't think about this? And so, and then check this out. It goes, let me go just slightly further here. That turmoil has sparked a reaction by members of Congress from coastal states such as Louisiana and Maryland, which have lost marine jobs. This week, at a Senate subcommittee hearing, legislators will begin the struggle to repeal the tax that has hurt people like Dave Harrison. Mr. Harrison, owner of Harrison Yacht, said the small number of workers he has left sell less expensive boats. Sales over $100,000 have stopped, said Mr. Harrison who last year sold $1.8 million in yachts that would have been subject to the new federal tax. To date, we have yet to collect $1 in luxury tax. <laughs> Oops. Unintended consequences. But these virtuous people that passed this thing, they thought they knew better. And it's, it's just, because what could they do? These, these greedy rich people, they got us, but no, 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 let's take this. We're the government, we're gonna take this. We're gonna have, it's gonna generate more tax revenue and then we're, we're gonna put it wherever the hell we want. Oh, is that right? Well, you know what? It was working just fine when the rich people had their little floaty objects, these yachts, and then the economy was spurred. That worked just fine as it turns out. But take a look at this. Here's an article, and so this is from 1999, so some time has passed. You know, you know almost a decade later, this, this thing had passed, and it had since been repealed because it was disastrous, and it was passed by these people that had this, they didn't think, they, they got the feels, it feels good to do this, but they didn't think about the repercussions. Um, and and so, check, so it was repealed, thankfully. But, but check, check out some of the facts here. So it was called the Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act of 1990. That's what it was. So check this out. So this is the article from 1999 from the Baltimore Sun titled, When a Luxury Tax Took Wind Out of Yacht Sales. Check out how bad this was. In 1990, there were no luxury excise taxes. All of them have been repealed in 1965. But perhaps every quarter century or so, government, it cannot help itself, must go on a fairness bender, the memory of the hangover from similar misadventures having faded. In 1990, the Joint Committee on Taxation projected that the 1991 revenue yield from the luxury taxes would be $31 million. The actual yield was $16.6 .6 million. Why? Because, surprise, the taxation changed behavior. Fewer people bought the taxed products. Demand went down when prices went up. So folks, think about it. If your budget for a car is, say, $40,000, but, but then there's a tax that adds an extra 10%, you know, so, so imagine what that would be. So then you're talking about your budget. So the cost would go up to $44,000. If that's not in your budget, it's not in your budget, son. It's the same for rich people. If your budget is 400000 and it goes up, and then, and then the, the tax would result in it being 440000 because it's 10%, well, then you don't buy it. Especially if you feel like you're getting hosed. That's exactly what it's supply. Oh, my God. It's, it's amazing like the, so these are the geniuses that we have in Congress. They were the, the, just as idiotic back then as they are now. Fiscally irresponsible, but they're so virtuous, aren't they? 
And so then they write here, after saying, so demand went down when prices went up. Washington was amazed. People bought yachts overseas. Who would have thought it? So folks, the people that did want yachts, they, they, bought, they bought them overseas. They, they just didn't buy them in the United States. Oh my God. <laughs> and it's actually not that hard to have seen that this might have happened. And yet this thing passed. And then they're right here. According to a study done for the Joint Economic Committee, the tax destroyed 330 jobs in jewelry manufacturing, 1,470 in the aircraft industry, and 7,600 in the boating industry. The job losses cost the government a total of $24.2 million in unemployment benefits and lost income tax revenues. So the net effect of the taxes was a loss of $7.6 million in fiscal 1991, which means the government projection was off by $38.6 million. <laughs> Disastrous. And so, folks, that's why I push back to all these people that say, they, oh, man, what a waste. It could have been, other people deserve it more. You could, you could have helped. You could have done so many good things instead of giving that money to Lenny Kravitz. Are you sure you know better? Have you thought about... Uh, the consequences of this, because there are always unintended consequences. And what, what, what gives you the right to presume that you're on such a moral high ground? Because you're not. Rich people are not. The, 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 do you understand why capitalism works? The, the fact that that incentive is there that drives people to earn more money and start businesses and all that, which benefits additional people, that's the reason this whole system works. And you want to you mess around? You want to tinker with that? You sure about that, buddy? And because you're virtuous and you want to help the little people, you, so many times the little people get harmed when crap like this happens. And so I don't care, again, even if a million dollars went to Lenny Kravitz from Ripple, good. Because think about all of the jobs that were supported in New York City because of this. And then think about all that money getting invested. Um, you know, because again, if, you're, if it's getting invested into equities, think about all the firms that, that they're going to do. You understand that stocks getting purchased and then if he wants to go buy stuff if lenny kravitz wants to go buy stuff say he wants to go buy a hundred thousand dollar yacht with his ripple money cool because then the comp then the yacht companies get to benefit from that and the people they employ stop being so short-sighted on this and stop making ripple out to be the enemy because they're doing what they want to with their funds which they earned which they sold based on open market supply and demand dynamics for xrp and then on top of that, to be so bitter after they took those profits and they spent it on the community for a party for the community that may have cost upwards of a million dollars. And even if it was way less, that's still a ton of money, even if it were half a million dollars. And, and then on top of that, it's like you're upset that Ripple's quote unquote wasting this money. Did you feel that they were wasting the $200 million when they fought the SEC? Or should they not have done that too? Because that's your money, you think, because you're so entitled. Are you kidding me? So you're, are you just against the, the, the party, the proper party? Are you against then the 200 times more expensive, 200 to 400 times more ex expensive, uh, you, know, uh, you know, fight against the SEC? Because it's estimated that is about $200 million. That's what Brad Garlinghouse stated. Or is that part okay? Because that helps you. Is that part okay? Come on, guys. <laughs> so those are my thoughts. You guys tell me. So if you think I'm wrong, go ahead and articulate a reason why. I, it's just, I've always felt this way. To, to me, it's just like, I come from uh, like a situation where I, I was fortunate to be raised by, in a very healthy upbringing with, with two, two parents. And I understand that, like, fr frankly, that's a privilege today. I was raised right, and I, I have relatives that, you know, many relatives that started their own businesses and found success. And I understand the, the, the hard work it takes and the risk and the lost sleep and the stress, sometimes depression and, and see everything that all these people have gone through, including people like specifically related to me. And I'm aware of this. And then when I see people assume that uh, they know what's better to do with their hard earned profits, it kind of grinds my gears a little bit. So nothing personal against the people that feel differently than me, but I'm telling you, this is the reason that I may sound a bit passionate about this is because I just, even if it's coming from a place of good intentions, it's wrong. And if you had your way, you would damage the system that works. You shouldn't be tinkering with that which you don't understand when you don't, under, like the downstream ramifications would be tremendous if you got the way that things the way that you wanted it. There's a proper incentive structure in place. And as long as that's there, we're fine. Stop being so damn jealous. Go earn your money. How about that? 
stop being so upset with what Ripple's doing with their money. That is theirs, not yours. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.